Welcome to module three of our SEO workshop. I'm excited to get started here because the first two modules have really been about laying the foundation for what we're about to do in module three. In module one, we talked about the optimizations we needed to make to our site to kind of get it ready to rank with Google. We took our existing content and we started optimizing that. We made some changes, we added keywords, we sped up the load time of our site and the hosting. We worked on a whole bunch of different things. And then in module two, we made sure that our Google business was created that we were getting reviews and we started getting that social traction, creating traffic. We went through all of those different techniques and now we're entering module three, which is all about creating rank worthy content. So now it is time to create content that Google looks at and says, wow, this has authority behind it. It has relevance to my users. I'm going to show this site in the search results with this content. So our first step in module three is going to be creating a roadmap. We're not going to be making random articles and random blog posts and just hoping for results. We're going to plan out our content in such a way that we know it is going to get results and it is going to get ranked. So that is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to create what's called cornerstone content for your website. So the question you will then ask is what is cornerstone content, Ryan? To which I would say, fine sir, madame, cornerstone content is the content that defines your site. So we're going to create three to five articles that define the main focus of our entire site. Essentially what we're doing is we're selecting our top three to five keywords that we want our site to rank for, and then we're building content that points to those uh, main articles. So it's pretty simple. We're just going to create one page for each keyword that you want to rank for. So in our earlier video, you already went through and selected the keywords that you want your website to rank for. So we've done that. And after we have those main keywords selected, we're going to write a well-written long form article for each. We're essentially just going to make an individual page for each of those keywords. Then we're going to create a network of sub posts, which is basically smaller little niche articles that have to do some way or shape or form with this topic. And then within each of those sub posts, we're going to link to our main post. So before you get confused, don't worry, it's really quite simple. All you have to do is create a little map and we're going to map out our content. So let's say that I wanted to rank for this term. I was a doctor's office and I wanted to rank for healthy heart. So at the center here, I have my cornerstone content. That is this article here on the healthy heart. And so I would create a page on my website, much like this example here. So how your heart works has a page called your heart. And you can see that this is their main page. And on this main page, they have links and a bunch of subcategory articles that are all talking about the heart. So heart foundation helpline, heart attack, know your risks. And each of these are kind of a sub kind of piece of related content. And on that related content, it links back to this main page, which is your heart. And you can see that these are their main cornerstone content. They've got your heart, after my heart attack, healthy eating, active living, research, and all of their posts are linking in some way, shape, or form to these categories. So cornerstone content is kind of the catch-all content. It's the large, big idea. And then we're going to create smaller ideas within those big ideas. So let's say that these are the keywords that I want to go for as a wedding photographer. So I'm going for my location, wedding photography, Kelowna wedding venue, Okanagan weddings, and then I want two different ones that represent kind of the work I do. So I've got British Columbia elopements and adventure wedding photographer. I think it'd be great to do wedding photography with couples who really have those off the beaten track kind of weddings. So I'm going to try and rank for that as well. So what I would do is I'd sit down and I would go through each keyword. So I'd start with Kelowna wedding photographer. I'm going to create a page around that topic. And then I'm going to brainstorm different content ideas that I could produce to point to this big main page. So these are going to be little blog posts and at, inside of each of these blog posts, I'm going to link to this main page. Does that make sense? So I might have photo shoot locations in Kelowna. That might be one post and I list a bunch of photo, lo photo shoot locations and then they all link to this Kelowna wedding photography page. Or I might have individual weddings. So as I finish my weddings and I have Thomas and Jane's wedding, I link in the bottom of their blog post, doo -doo 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 -doo, at the very bottom it says, check out our Kelowna wedding photographer page for more photography, right? And that links over to this Kelowna wedding photographer page. And on this page, I have all of the articles and information listed for that. Let's move on to our next keyword. So I would brainstorm my next one, which might be Kelowna wedding venues. So I would come up with some content ideas to surround that. So I might have a list of all the outdoor venues in Kelowna, the ceremony locations in Kelowna, may create another, post on the do-it-yourself kind of wedding venue ideas. 
Perhaps I do roast reception locations, elopement locations, list of venues. You get the point. Now, what's important is you don't have to have necessarily each article directly have the word Kelowna in it. It could just be about, you know, 10 tips to choose an amazing wedding venue or 18 ways to save on your reception location. Does that make sense? So we're creating content that is in some way related to our main keyword, but it doesn't have to be an exact Kelowna wedding venues and then um, venues in Kelowna, ceremony locations in Kelowna. I can do more than just those location-based keywords, okay? So let's move on to something a little bit different. We can actually create even larger strings of kind of nested information. My main keyword might be Okanagan Weddings, and then inside of that, I could actually have Kelowna Weddings. And inside of Kelowna Weddings, I would have what I just brainstormed here. So Kelowna Weddings would have these posts linking to it, and then the Kelowna Weddings page would link to my Okanagan Weddings page. So you can see that it's kind of creating a content web so one post links to another post links to our main post and those main posts are our cornerstone content. So what we're going to do is actually map out all of this. I'm going to show you a couple more examples just to make sure that you really have this under your belt. Adventure wedding photography. Here are some ideas I could create around that topic. I could do how to elope. Maybe I could do planning a destination wedding or best elopements in the world. I could make a list of the craziest engagement stories. I could have a post called should you have a destination wedding. So all of this content that posts, um, that all links to my main adventure wedding photography page. And that's how you get this page to rank because you have a bunch of sub articles that are all hopefully getting traffic and then linking to your main page, which is getting all of that juice is heading in that one direction. Google says this must be a very important page. It's getting all of these internal links. Okay, so that's how I would do that. Here's one more example in case you are not a photographer. For example, let's say that you ran a surf shop or you were a yoga instructor for surfers and you decided you wanted to rank for this term because you offer surf lessons on the beach in your local hometown in Cabo, right? So we would break this down into different topics. We've got best surf spots in Cabo, surfing for adults, surfing longevity, surfing injury, preventing... Uh, and then we've got the yoga section of things, yoga recovery tips, how to get better at surfing, um, beach yoga routine, best yoga for core strength. So we're just looking for topics that tie in to the broader topic and support this thing right here. Does that make sense? We're just looking for all these little pieces of this big master puzzle, every single topic we can think of, and they're all going to link and funnel into this one big broad topic, this piece of cornerstone content. And now the cornerstone content we're going to build out as well to make a very large resource, something very handy, something very shareable, something with a lot of meat to it, a lot of words, a lot of content, a lot of images that's really going to dominate in search results because we've got all these backlinks to this one big page and this one big page is going to be full of helpful shareable content that gets ranked. So what you're going to want to do is find three to five keywords that you want to rank for. What you want to show up for on Google, three to five of them. You can also target keywords that aren't directly related to your particular service, but will still have your target customer. So for example, if you're a family photographer, one of your main keywords would obviously be family photography, but maybe you could also have a page dedicated to toddler photography or dedicated to newborn photography or dedicated to maternity photography in Kansas if you're in Kansas. Does that make sense? So we're breaking it down and going for kind of subcategories for our targeted keywords or related industries. So for instance, if I was a kayak instructor in BC, I might actually have a page dedicated to camping in BC, even though that's not directly what I'm selling. It's a category that is related to my customers. They're still interested in it. And when they visit my website for those resources, they'll see my kayaking instructing stuff as well. Okay. So find your three to five keywords you want to rank for, and then you're going to research and list 12 related articles that will support each page. So you can do this by listing out articles that come to mind that are very obvious, or head over to Pinterest and just double check what people are actually looking for. So for instance, I put in choose a wedding photographer up in Pinterest and up come these posts that are being shared, people are engaging with. So questions for your wedding photographer, right? Or any photographer, you could put in questions to ask your family photographer and then you could write that article and link it to your Kansas wedding photographer page or to your Kansas family photographer page, whatever type of photography you do. Just go through here and find articles and then write a longer, better, nicer article or just something very similar, right? You're basically finding content that is already proven to work, that people are already sharing, already engaged in, and already interested in. There's nothing worse than spending a bunch of time on a topic that nobody is actually interested in. You just thought that they would be, and crickets ring when you finally share that post. So go through, make a list of your five 
keywords, and then 12 related articles that you want to produce that will link to each of those cornerstone pages. Okay. From there, we are going to start creating our content. I'll see you in the next one. All right, so you have gone through by now, chosen your five main keywords you want to rank for, and made a list of 12 supporting articles that will rank to each of your cornerstone pages. It's time to get started in actually creating your cornerstone content and your supporting content. I'm excited because this is where the rewards really come from. Because at the end of the day, we need to create rank worthy content if we're going to see real results in our SEO efforts. Through optimization, you can make some definite progress. You can start to rank, but really having a dominating rank worthy content plan is what is going to get you big results. Now, here's the thing that you do need to know though. Content is hard work. It's not easy. And I wish there were a recipe that I could give you that would just make it, you know, sprinkles and fairy dust. And all of a sudden your website is ranking. Unfortunately, it's hard work to make it happen. But it does work, and that's the important part. And there's more than just ranking that you get out of great content. Content generates traffic, so you're actually getting viewers visiting your site because of the content you produce. It creates a backlink, which is very important for SEO, and it builds likability and trust with your potential customers. So that's the biggest bonus of creating great content is when a future prospective client, whoever it is, goes and sees your content and they are helped by it and they actually find that content valuable. They're going to like you more and trust you more and be appreciative and that much more likely to book you. Even if they were choosing between, say, business A and business B and yours is A and it's a little bit more expensive and B is a little bit cheaper and they were leaning that way, they might go with you simply because they like you and they trust you. And that is why it is said that content is king. Now, it's more than just content that we need to produce. We need to produce quality content to really see results because people need to find it helpful and valuable and shareable if it's going to um, produce the results that we want. And quality content is also not just enough. We also need to find people who value that and share it with them so that they know it exists. If people don't know you exist, if they don't know your website is out there, they can never book you, never see your content. And we all know that struggle, right? You create the website, you're not having visitors and traffic. That might be why you bought this in the first place to show you how to get people to know you exist. And we are going to show you those strategies as well. So in this video, step two, we're going to create our cornerstone content and supporting articles. Now, I'm not going to walk you through every single step of, of writing an article because you can write an article on your own. I know that you are a big person and you have the skills, but I am going to show you an example of some cornerstone content. So I just created this web page because I said I should probably have an example for you um, for Vernon Wedding. So I wanted to rank for a nearby city that is near Kelowna. It's called Vernon. And so the keyword I'm targeting on this page is Vernon Wedding Photography. And so I've gone through and I've created some text and a nice design. So Vernon Wedding Photographers is right at the very top because that is the keyword that I want to rank for. It's heading one tag. Remember all the other um, stuff that we've talked about so far for S SEO optimization applies to this. So I've got a welcome specializing in authentic and organic destination weddings. And so I've got my keyword sort of scattered in here. We've got weddings, we've got elopements, we've got wedding photography based in Vernon and the Okanagan, which is the surrounding area. Then we've got all things Vernon wedding photography combination of Vernon weddings, ceremony sites, reception venues, and resources for planning a wedding in Vernon. So that's what this content article page is about. Then I've gone ahead and just inserted some other nice stuff to make it uh, look visually pleasing. I've got some testimonials here, a few of fave Vernon wedding and engagements. And so what I would do is create this kind of a page for each of your keywords. So let's say that I was an Arizona hot tub salesman. I would make a page for Arizona hot tubs or for a specific city. Maybe that would be Phoenix hot tub sales emporium. And then it would say Phoenix hot tub experts. Welcome to the experts on all things Phoenix hot tubbing. We cover all of it. We've got advice and resources and tutorials for getting the very most out of your hot tub experience in the Phoenix area. Make sure to browse our resources below and learn everything there is to know about hot tubbing at its best inside of Phoenix. Maybe have some testimonials. And what I've done actually, just to show you, because it can be kind of hard to come up with these pages, you can look at a website that has great SEO already, like Lynn and Gersa, which we covered the other day, or I just grabbed my homepage. And I essentially just took what was already on my homepage because I put a lot of work into optimizing this. And you'll see a pattern emerging here, right? So if we look at that, and then we look at this page, the layout is exactly the same. And that's okay. Google isn't going to penalize me for making the layout visually the same, and it's going to look more consistent with my brand, which is great. I have just gone through, I took all of that layout, and I switched the text. 
So I rewrote the text instead of it being Love is an adventure. Welcome to Taylor Fit Photography. It now says Vernon Wedding Photographers. Welcome to Taylor Fit Photography. Okay, so I've gone through, saved myself a bunch of time by copying that layout over. And then this is where I would insert links to all of my articles to do with Vernon Wedding Photography because that's the keyword I'm targeting. So I might have all of the weddings that took place in Vernon up here. I would create some of my other content based around my content map. This might be, you know, 12 wedding, ver wedding venues in Vernon or outdoor wedding venues in Vernon or how to choose your wedding venue. I would have all of that just organized in here. And all this is is just my blog post. And I have the rest of my page is the same thing. I went through and I just took this text and I switched it out and rewrote it so that it had my keywords in here. We grew up in Vernon and love being here. Being in Vernon is always a treat for us. You know, I've got Vernon. I've got some nearby venues in here. So I've got Silver Star, which is Vernon Ski Hill. I have Sparkling Hill in here somewhere. And there we go, which is a resort right nearby, which has a lot of weddings. Predator Ridge also has a lot of weddings. A lot of venues to choose from, such as Silver Sage out near Lavington. Again, this is a nearby kind of suburb in Vernon, as well as more isolated areas of BC. That's my state and some surrounding areas as well. So I'm inserting keywords in here strategically, but also not making it unreadable. So it makes sense when you read through it. You want to keep the personality in there. Again, it's always a balance between SEO and user experience because I don't want to come off as a spammy spammer, but I do need to get my keywords in there if I want this page to rank. So again, I've got Vernon Wedding Photographers and a little bit of information about our studio, and I've rewritten it to include information on Vernon and then some contact info on the bottom. So that's all you need for a cornerstone page. So it doesn't have to look like this. You don't have to copy this format exactly. It could just be a long article. Let's say that you wanted to rank for Vernon Wedding Venues. So let's go through here and see what is currently ranking for Vernon Wedding Venues. And because I'm in America right now and Vernon, the Vernon I'm talking about is in Canada, we're going to go like this. So Wedding Wire is ranking and again, here's my website ranking near the top. And I could probably update this and get it to the top. You can see that this website has not been updated in a while because I'm not really doing wedding films anymore. But you can see that this is not anywhere near as pretty or awesome. It's simply a list of Vernon Wedding Venues and then some info at the top. So I've got, if I actually search here, Vernon appears 82 times, Vernon Wedding Venue appears 24 times, Venues appears five times. So you can see that my keywords are in here. I've got a simple page, um, and this is a little spammy. I wouldn't actually do this anymore. I would make it more useful for people rather than having this text to skip over. And then you could just have, if you're targeting wedding venues, you could have a list of all of your venues on this page. It doesn't have to be complicated. It could just be a simple article with a list of different resources for um, brides and grooms and whoever it is that is your target market to look through. So it's as simple as that to create your cornerstone content. And after that, we are just going to find linking articles and assign them to that page. So for instance, I'm going to just save myself some time here. So by doing this in Google, I just put site tailoredfitphotography.com. That's my website. And then I put what I wanted to search for. So it's searching for all of the um, terms that line up on this particular site. So I have all of these. I've got this wedding happened in Vernon. And here's the archive of all weddings tagged with Vernon. Here's another wedding in Vernon. And so I could go through then and grab each of these, open up this blog post that already exists. I don't have to put any more work into it. I would just grab, and this is old, so don't judge me for my hashtag 2000s editing style. I go through and I would grab this page. I would edit it. And somewhere in here, I would insert a link. So I would probably put it in the bottom maybe and say for more wedding photography visit our Vernon wedding photography page and then you would click pretend that said this and I would click it and that would take me to this Vernon wedding photography page wherever that went so that's what we're going to do you're going to create your cornerstone content it doesn't have to be complicated all you need to do is just create a nice page that looks visibly pleasing and has your keywords on it and then you can organize your blog posts and resources inside of that page if that's how you want to lay it out or you can make one large article on that particular topic depending on what your keyword is and then you're going to go ahead and grab the posts you already have that have to do with that topic and link to that page and if you do not have posts already you're just going to get started and make some posts. So for instance, choosing a wedding venue, I'm typing into Pinterest now, and I would go ahead and grab, let's see, budget tip 32. Well, I don't really want budget clients, so five steps to choosing a wedding venue, that sounds great. So I'm going to take a look at this particular article, 
and grab the points that they have and then just rewrite a similar article around a very similar topic insert some of my images into my post and then at the bottom link to my Vernon wedding photographer page so it's as simple as that we're going to create two to three pieces of content if you don't have any content for each of your um, cornerstone pages and if you already do have content then just assign that content to your cornerstone page and start creating those links so you have five keywords to do and at least three pieces of content for each keyword. So this is definitely not going to be easy, right? Content is hard work. You're going to have to take the time, um, do it over a couple of days, maybe just do it for 30 minutes a day for a couple of weeks, smash it out. An article shouldn't take you more than say 30 or 40 minutes tops. So after a couple of weeks, you'll have all this content. And I know it seems like a ton of work, but the beauty is very, very few people are willing to do this. In fact, if you're watching this video, you may or may not do it. I'm assuming that probably 90% of you guys watching this video are not going to actually do the hard work of creating this content, so you are not going to see the same results as the people who choose to do it. So I challenge you, be one of those people, do the hard work, create this content, and you will start to see results. In the next video, I'm going to show you some strategies to get your content seen, and also we're going to dive into the killer SEO strategy I've been saving for last, and it is video. All right, let's do it. Before we move on, we do need to focus on optimizing our content with each of our cornerstone content pieces. So again, you're just going to apply the exact same rules as before. I realized I didn't show you behind the scenes of this particular cornerstone content example. You're going into your editor and make sure that obviously you have your keywords in your text as we did before and go down to your SEO plugin or whatever SEO system you're using and make sure that you are entering in your focus key phrase as whatever keyword you're targeting and just make sure you're getting the thumbs up from your SEO perspective that your description is good that your keyword is showing up that everything is set up and green before we move on into the next step okay 